All right, greetings all. It's time to take on Esteban in the mines here. So, Manguana Mines. After a long march through the mountains of Manguana, your advance party doubles back to warn you that you're coming up on the mines, but they seem abandoned. You find a place to hide your carts, then you cautiously advance upon the mines with your troops. True enough, there's not a soul in sight, but a light smoky haze lazily from the shack near the edge of the mine pit. So bring a few people and sneak closer to the shack. You dismount to move along the edge of the pit, staying low and trying to muffle your sounds of your equipment. Half a dozen armed men are in the pit, searching the corpses of Spanish soldiers. One of the men shouts out up to the shack, calling Esteban's name. Duck behind cover and watch the cave. The door to the shack opens to reveal Esteban. He's wearing no shirt, and his muscle-bristling torso easily fills the doorframe, leaving little room for his head, which is adorned by the most oppressive and unreasonable beard you've ever been challenged to comprehend. Are you finished? Listen. See. They have nothing of more value. Esteban grabs his sword from inside the cabin and comes out to join his men with a grunt. Their lieutenant refused to speak. His resilience did him honor. Let's be off. We have to rejoin Jacomi and the others soon. So we'll continue listening. I could confront him here, by the way, but we're just going to continue listening for now. Uh, just so you can read this. So basically, give us time to rest. We spilled a lot of blood today. Another soldier in the group spits and lets out a disgruntled bark. A lot of Spanish blood. And all to free a bunch of Negro slaves. Continue listening. The other men fall quiet. Esteban calmly walks up to the distant man and places a hand on his shoulder. Careful, Kaku, you're hurting my feelings. He lets out a bellowing laugh and everyone joins in, even Kaku, then turns his head to address the whole group. It's hard to have put your lives on a line for a sorry bunch of slaves, I understand that, but we needed his family to be free, for our sake as much as theirs. Esteban once more turns his gaze to the man who spoke out, then he lifts his sword. Kaku eyes the blade a little warily. You must trust me, Kaku. I need all of you. I cannot fight the crown alone. Esteban sheaths his sword, and Kaku visibly exhales. Then the giant punches Kaku square in the face, knocking him to the ground. Everyone else immediately starts laughing at Kaku's expense, while Esteban extends his hand to help him back on his feet. Kaku is clutching his nose, which is bleeding profusely, but he also appears to be chuckling. I know you're all tired, we have, we have, but we have to move out. We've got Santo Domingo as isolated now, and all we have to do is apply to Coupe de Grass. Now, if I wanted to, I could basically use my tactics to, to uh, deal with this guy, but we're actually going to confront him just so we can talk a little bit more, and I don't really like um, ambushing him at the entrance, so we'll do that. So, as Espen's comp company is preparing to move out, you and your troops step out of where you were and hiding and draw your weapons of cutting them off. The wor weary rebels scramble to get their helmets on and their weapons ready, and two of them scatter bags of caltrips on the ground between you. Espen steps out in front of them with a sword and shield fairly in hand. So basically, you can like you know ask what transpired, or you know you can talk to him. But but let's just ask what transpired. Hmm, atrocity, nonsense. We came here to do something, and the soldiers objected. They attacked us. The deaths were self-defense. I was too late to save them. I will make sure you will never repeat this crime. Espen sh shifts his weight restlessly. Don't get involved in this. You are a young and beautiful woman. I do not wish to fight you. So you can basically ask him to surrender, and this will make your peaceful people um, happy. And I might just do that just so, you know, my peaceful people don't get more mad at me than they're already going to be. Going to be. So basically, yeah. And of course, courageous men for followers don't like it either, I guess. So, Espen shakes his head slowly. There is too much at stake, too much depends on our, our success, so to defend yourselves, basically you have no other option to attack him. We gave him the option to, uh, you know, not attack us but in surrender, but he just refused, so we're going to have to kill him. Now, for this fight, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. We're going to bring the Skuller for once, and we're going to show off what the Skuller's all about. I'm also going to bring around both my hunters. And the reason I'm bringing around both these hunters is just for a simple reason that um, this will be a very big range fight. I'll also bring Isabella because she's got a bow for a ranged weapon, so she'll be a little bit more accurate at longer ranges. And I'll bring around um, both my doctors, I think, for this fight as well. So let's bring around Teresa and Marisol. Now, for equipment, I don't really need to have, uh, you know, stuff on my soldiers for, for this fight. I really need to be on, like, the hunters here and the scholar and such. So we're going to take it off... Uh, you know, my uh, scout here for sure. And we'll give you a bump. And you a bump. Martinez, Biero, and Padilla is not going to need their equipment, so we'll take it off them. And we got lots of spare equipment, as you can see, to put on our people. So Arun is just going to get up uh, a little bunch of equipment. I'm actually going to give her an increase in her max lock, so she has at least a little bit of chance to... Um, do more damage, though probably won't help her too much. And then for the rest of them, 
we'll, we'll, we'll bump up the doctor's weapons and then we'll just, you know, go around bumping up the, uh, the knives, I guess, of these guys, because I really got nothing else better to do with them. So, this time we're going fully equipped with all our guys, so that's not really saying much. And then we'll just put the rest of it on, um, Marina here. So I know who's the, uh, scout I'm, you know, leveling up. So not really leveling up this one as much, Daniela. So up to battle, and I'll show you what this fight's all about. So, in the Esteban fight, the first one you do with him, you'll find Esteban and his multi-crew down here in the middle of the mine, and you're up here on top. And basically, Esteban here is his sergeant soldier, and you'll see what sergeants are all about in a moment. He's flanked by um, a hunter here, another hunter here there, and he's also got Kaku over here, the veteran soldier. This man arms a native warrior, and he's also got his trapper over here. Now, in this fight, the real threats that you have to really worry about are going to be like the hunters and the trapper over here. And then there's also these guys that you have to worry about as well, but, you know, they're just, you know, going to be there really to, you know, make your day, so to speak. Now, you'll notice that on the battlefield, you've basically got this long line before they get down to you, so this is really much a ranged fight. And that's why I brought ranged people to help me out. We're basically just going to move everyone up to the front line and get this underway. I think I'll put um, this bill over here. And we're just basically going you know, to fire down on them while they fire back at us. Now, with the Skuller, here's what the Skuller is all about. The Skuller is like the support class type of character. And this is where this is one of those few fights where she can really shine. Basically, when she fires at someone, she will reduce the chance that they... Or reduce the the dam... Or she'll reduce the armor they have so they take a little more damage when you shoot at them. So basically, we're going to shoot this uh, Hunter here. Now, even though she missed... even Realize where she hits or misses. She's going to reduce the defense of the guy by 10. So, this guy's going to have more damage taken whenever he gets shot at. And now we're, you know, basically going to do that. We're just going to shoot him with mul multiple weapons here. So, boom. We'll shoot him with the uh, bow hunter. Oof. I don't like these misses. Getting misses left and right is not a good thing here. Good. Isabella got shot. So, that's why I brought Isabella along. She basically has a higher chance of hitting at long range. So, her bow is going to be more useful here. Teresa will take a fire and shot at him. And miss. And we'll have Marisol take her shot. Go for a little bow. Now Sally didn't do more damage than that. I hopefully I want to basically knock him out. Hopefully, you know, at the first go there, but oh well. For this fight basically now, I basically want these guys to sort of, you know, hide behind where possible my guys. And there's really no point for them not having their bows out since they're not gonna use anything else. And, more or less at this point, I just want um, these guys to sort of, you know, kill these guys. Alright, that looks good. So basically, now they're going to fire at us. And, I'll notice that this soldier here, he always does like this sort of move. He'll move over there to the wall. And then the rest of the start shooting at us. So, here goes uh, the guy who I did, did a reduced defense on. And you really want to watch out for a trapper because he's got poison sting there. Poison sting can basically poison your guys, and that can be a real detriment. I'm going after my doctor. He uses a blowgun, that uh, warrior there. And then Esteban will sometimes come over here if he wants. That's actually good that I came over here because it actually makes it more ideal for fighting these guys. So, let's do this again. Um, now, because this guy's really injured, this is where I get to show you off some of the abilities that these guys have. The Skuller has, like, these abilities, like Logistics, Squaring Attack, and, um, Distraction. They're, like, more support abilities. Logistics will basically boost up your movement. Um, two if you're, like, just using Recruit Skuller, four if it's a Veteran Skuller, and six if you're a Sergeant Skuller, but because I'm a Veteran, we can only do, like, you know, a boost of four. We're not going to use this right now, but really what we're going to use is one of these two. Coordinate Attack will basically boost the defense of these guys by ten. So now, basically, they're going to do increased 10% damage on all of these guys when they fire off. And that's ideal because, basically, I'm going to finish this guy off, I think, in this fight. So, there's that going to happen. Um, let's have Gabrielle take her first shot at the uh, guy down here, I think. 
and nearly kill him. Then we'll, like, I think, just have the other guys, like the doctor here, take a firing shot. And miss. Let's try Isabella taking her shot. And there we go. So, there goes that guy. And now that he's out of the way, we can basically use our other guys to take pot shots of someone else. Now, essentially, um, I probably want to take out the trapper first because he's, you know, uh, got that poison sting. And he's going to basically try and use it again in the fight. So, I try hitting him. And I did. And basically, you know, we got to worry about uh, partial cover here a little bit, but... Fire. I'll move you there. And I think we're actually going to have... Um, essentially, there's some guys in here that are sort of important not to get killed. Like the doctors. You don't want your doctors getting killed. Um, because they have to heal up people if like, there's you know, problems after. I think we'll have our bow hunter step forward a little bit. And she'll maybe absorb a few shots from these guys in the next turn. And hopefully keep the doctor from getting shot at here. Ooh, I got hit by a doctor. The doctor got hit there. Another hit right there. That's really bad. My doctor's taking hits. But luckily that one missed. And then it's going to shoot me down over there. Now note that where they are right now, the soldier in the, in the uh, you know, both those soldiers, Esteban and um, Kaku over here. Over here is like a, basically a, a blind spot. You can't really hit them very well from there. So basically you'll have like partial cover problems here. All right, in this uh, predicament, I've got to have this doctor heal up um, Trace over here a little bit. And I'm thinking I'm just going to have her fire down here. And miss, of course. So, I'm kind of concerned about damage. These guys are going to be able to do a lot of damage. You know, if I'm not careful. Distraction will basically reduce their damage by 20% for a turn. So now they'll do less damage on me. And that can be useful just to reduce the damage a little bit. While I try and do a little bit more damage to these guys in return. Alright, let's have you fire at him. I'll have Isabel switch to her little bow and try and shoot at the guy as well. Nice, and getting shots at this, this guy, so that's great. Nice, another hit. I usually don't get hits like this left and right with the RNG. Like, I'll actually, no, I actually tried running through this um, episode of already, but uh, I had such a severe crash that I basically lost all my stuff, so I just, you know, I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna, you know, basically restart it. All right, um, the way this is, I'm kind of concerned she's going to take some more hits, but whatever. So yeah, they're going after Tracer quite a bit here. All right, there's what Sergeant can do. That's the smoke bomb, and you'll see what that's all about in a moment. Not really, but I'll just talk about it. Teresa takes another hit. And... Well, that's bad. So he's Poison Sting and a critical hit on Teresa. So Teresa's taking some massive damage here at this point. And that's actually really bad because um, she could go down. So what I'm going to do with Teresa, we're actually just going to move her all the way down behind these blocks where she can't be fired at. So note that no one has shots besides Esteban over here. And that guy over there, apparently. Also note that this guy's out of range, so he can't hit me, but... Um, the other guys here more or less can. Alright, let's see if you can move down here and... Okay, good. That'll basically avoid shots from everyone right there, except for Esteban. So we'll leave a doctor there and hopefully she won't take any more hits from that position. And you know what? Let's have uh, you move on down here as well. Alright, at this point, um, we're basically just going to go back with uh, the Scholar shooting at people again. But... Um, we're possible on trying 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 to take that guy out first, so move these guys as such. I'll have Isabella try and take her shot at him. 
Well, they didn't get that lucky, but oh well. Let's have my recruit hunter here try it. So that guy's down. No more poison stings from him. Isabel can switch back to her sword and shield, so she can, she can possibly block shots. Now I've only got to really worry about the warrior, the hunter, Esteban, and his little multi guy over there. Now, you want to note that this is Smoke Bomb here. What's doing? These guys are now basically partially in cover because of Smoke Bomb. Essentially, the Smoke Bomb is blocking a uh, view of basically this guy and this guy. So I can't really fire through without getting, like, you know, partial obstruction of the shot. Um, if I'm inside a smoke bomb, it's negated that a little bit, but um, we're not going to have that little advantage here, so that's not in. But notice that this, you know, basically we're out of the smoke and cover, so we don't have to worry about as much for the scholar there. Anyhow, we're going to go after the recruit here, I think, with the uh, scholar, and this reduces his damage a little bit, or not his damage, but his armor. And then I'll have uh, Gabriel take a shot from right there, and injure him a little bit. Oh, they went after Isabella there, and she got a critical hit on herself. That's something I know about blowguns, by the way. Blowguns have a high chance of critical. So you want to be very careful of them. She goes after Isabella. She, oh, he went after Teresa, so he went after my doctor, as um, Esteban over here. Went after you know, the doctor again. Alright, now I don't think I have to worry too much about um, Isabella in her positioning and all that, so we're just going to have her fire once. And I'm actually going to move her over here so that she can hopefully block off Esteban's shot on my um, doctor over here. Teresa can go over here and just, you know, do a quick heal. And she is sort of inside, I guess, sight radius here, so that's a bit of an issue. And yeah, she can still be shot. This guy's sort of out of the way, so I don't really have to worry about him anymore. Essentially, here's something to know about that guy. Um, once you get to a certain distance, Archibuses, they start to get you really out of range, so I've only got a 5% chance, even with the Hunter of this guy. So, he's really far away to hit. And, I think what we're going to do here is just do another distraction, so that they have reduced damage. And we'll have Marisol come over here and heal up Teresa. So Teresa takes a little bit more of a heal. And at this point, it's going to start moving them over here, these guys. Essentially, at some point, I like to basically start moving my guys around because it's just easier to get them up, up and close to them. So that's what we're going to start really doing right here. The first time I went around this battle, I had a very bad, um, shall we say, RNG hand, it, hand out to me. Where all these guys just got hits on my guys. Oh, my hunter took a damage there. So note that this guy, he's so far away that he's not even bothered to shoot. He's essentially so far away that, you know, oh, it's just better to defend. Oh, he's actually out of range, so I, can't, I actually can't hit that guy with my uh, Archivist anymore. Okay, he's almost dead, so I basically just want to fish him off with, uh, like, Isabella or something. So that's a miss. Um, Trace is the one who was basically getting hit before. Let's have you go over here and take a shot. And miss, apparently. Let's have the bow hunter take her shot, I guess, next. So there goes that guy. He's out of the picture. And we'll go after the hunter here, I guess. Or not the hunter. The Ooh, I got a shot. Pot shot. And I got a nice little damage boost burst on him. And I missed that shot, but oh well. But yeah, anyhow, at this point, I sort of like to move my guys sort of around the sort of game position to run up these guys at close range. Because, you know, eventually you just want to do that. 
I think these two will sit up here, though, because they're sort of in a good position to sort of stay out, stay, stay out of uh, the way. And you... I guess we'll heal up Gabriel a little bit with you. Move you there. Okay, you're going after my doctor. Espen moves over there. And Kaku's just defending for some reason. He's not moving at all. So I guess he's just going to cover the rear. For whatever reason. Anyhow, let's finish off this guy here. So, right now he's in partial cover because he's next to like a wall. Never mind, he's in partial cover because she's basically right there and now he's having to reach there in the way. Anyhow, let's finish him off. Well, as soon as one of these guys manages to get their hit on. Okay, there's partial cover there. So, that'll be hard to hit him. I might as well just go after Espinosa and Isabella. I'll have the doctor come out here and take a shot at the uh, warrior and miss. Hide behind him, why don't you? Doctor can come over here and take a shot and miss. And then let's have you move here, take a shot and miss and move over here. And these guys are just going to sort of leave them up here on the rig, so we'll move you, move them over here for now. Tilt the camera a little bit there. Looks like Aspen used another smoke bomb. Kaku is finally moving up toward us because we've started to move down, I guess, toward him. Teresa takes another attack. Uh, let's have you take another shot at him. Nice! Scholar got another hit. Interesting, because the Scholar's not really, you know, accurate or anything. Boink, another hit. Uh, let's have you take another hit. And down goes the warrior. So he's out of the picture. Alright, Isabella, you probably can't hit him, but um, you do have a shot on him, perhaps. So let's move you over here. And shoot. And miss. Now, that's one thing I really hate about this sort of map. It's kind of hard to navigate you around because of how it basically is set up. But whatever. Fire! You can move there. Alright, let's just see the health of these guys a little bit. So, right now, um, this doctor is a little bit injured. He kept, he kept getting attacked there a little bit, so that is sort of happening. Miss. Have you move right there, and I'll have the hunter here move over here, and hopefully that'll block off Hikyo from attacking her. And he goes after my doctor. And Espan's actually, I guess, coming over to say hi to us. Now, I think right now we're gonna have you go after um, Esteban, perhaps. Actually, you know what? This is probably the best time to sort of do this, but we're going to have uh, Logistics go off, I think, with the Scholar. So I'll save that um, for her to use that now. And I'll have you shoot at Esteban. And Isabella. Let's have you move over to here. So yeah, we're going to make her do a full move over to here. Um, I'm going to actually have this Doctor just heal up my other Doctor so she doesn't take any more damage again. I'll have this hunter move over to here. And take your shot. And none of these guys are really injured, so you can just move over here and take your own shot, I guess. Teresa. And we're getting a little bit of lag, which is kind of annoying. And you can see that uh, sort of appearing with, like, you know, Marisol doing a little running dance, so to speak. Now, logistics, you can basically do this at any time. 
but essentially it'll let you get um, extra moves on your people. So I can go to Isabella here. I'm actually out of range, I think, to do it. So there is a sort of range on doing this, so you can't, uh, you know, obviously do it from long range. I guess. So we'll just do uh, distraction, I guess, and reduce their damage this time around. He went after Isabella. And Esteban moved over there. Okay, I want to see if that's maybe just because I used up all, all her moves first. So, logistics. Okay, I can't use, use it because she is out of range. So, there's a minimum range, I guess, for logistics there. That's worth noting. Let's fire a cuckoo over here. Nice. I got a shot all the way over here. Let's just aim everyone at Kaku for now, I guess. And Marisol, or Trace, I guess, will do one of the heals on this person, Isabella. So, have you move over here and give heal to Isabella. And you can just take a shot on uh, Kaku. And miss, of course. Let's have you take your shot, I guess, or you can move forward, I guess, first, so... No, you'll, have, you'll take a shot, because I'm going to move Isabel in front of you. Boink. Still got a hit. Good. Let's move you right here. I'm actually going to have her do Flaw's Defense Isabel right there, because this guy's probably going to walk up, or maybe you may walk up to her. Um, Marisol, you can go first. You can go second. You can run over here. So this is a bit of a long fight, I guess, but it's not, you know, a difficult one. It's basically, you know, if you do it like the way I'm doing right now, it's just a, a ranged fest, so to speak. Everyone's fighting at each other from long range. All right, let's try firing. I'm getting really lucky with the pot shots, but I've only had two so far, I guess. You remiss because you're at long range, I guess. He didn't attack us, so we get to run up to him and do a shot on him. At melee range. And then I'll have you just run up to here. Or here. You can run up to uh, here. And my hunter can run all the way over to here. Okay, we can't exactly get close enough to her, but I can't hit Esteban, so we'll do that. Hit Esteban in the face. The doctor can move here and shoot him. And miss. And you can come up in front and take your shot at him. And miss. Well, he stunned um, Isabella, so that's not good. I need a smoke bomb. Alright, so... There's really no point curing her, but... Um, I may just do that. Let's do... Uh, quarantine attack, I think, with these guys. So they do a little bit of extra damage. I'm gonna, if you move here, you're going to move ahead and just uh, try and kill him. It's a quick shot. One shot. And it's okay if the second one misses because what I'm going to do next... Instead of having her use her bow, she's going to run up and just him in the face. Poke! And down he goes. So Kaku is out of the way. And you can just come over here and give uh, Isabel a cure, why not? That'll cure off the stun. Not really, not really do a whole lot, but... Whatever, just do it just for the sake of it. And while I got a very low chance of hitting him, but I still hit him. I'm getting really lucky with the shots here. RNG's being really nice. And Isabel takes another shot to the face. And you can just heal him up a little bit again. And let's have... Uh, let's make sure. Hey, there we go, we got logistics on. 
So now that uh, Isabel has logistics, you can run all the way up to um, Esteban here and hit him in the face. And actually, instead of doing that, we're actually going to run him all the way around Esteban. This will trigger the attack of opportunity, but um, he's using a rifle. So whatever, he's not going to do a big, big amount of damage to her. And I can do the same with one of these guys, if I want to. Boom. Now if I want to, I can run a doctor around him, but I think we're going to do instead, we're just going to do a poke. And then you can uh, apparently sit there because you can run out of moves. That's all the moves she had. Okay, the hunter here. I don't think the hunter's going to be able to attack through these guys, sadly, so... So we'll be able to get that close and then... So I'll have to basically run around him, I guess. And yeah, this is a really annoying thing about this map. It's hard to move around. And I guess you, you're sort of in a way to sort of move around anymore after that. Bow Hunter will take her shot. And miss, because she's at long range, but whatever. He stuns uh, Isabella. But oh well. I think we can get him. So let's just go for one shot. Let's have you go for a shot. Wow! Another long range shot hit. And that's when I went down. They lost a little bit of equipment, but whatever. That's to be expected, you know, some trickle hits on us. <clears throat> so, your troops cut down Esteban and his rebels one by one. When it's all over, you glance at Esteban only to see the prosperous bearded Hulk stumble back to his feet. He quickly takes cover behind a large rock before you men have a chance to fire at him. So surrender, Esteban. Let me take you back to Santiago as my prisoner. I will never surrender. Not to you, not to Domenos, not to King Carlos himself. So allow me to make it quite easier. You can say, I swear you'll be treated fairly. I believe you, Capitan, but I um, have obligations far beyond ensuring your, my own survival. His plain noble will yet be free of Spanish tyranny. You and your men, you fight well. That's good. I have fun. But next time I'll be better prepared. If you don't surrender, there, will be, there won't be a next... Before you have time to finish the sentence, Ispen swings around and knocks two of your uh, troops down with a sweep of his shield and hurls himself over the mountainside. See if he survived. You carefully lean over the edge of the cliff to look for Espen's body, but all you see is the backside of a giant disappearing out around an outcropping of rocks. Not only did he survive, he seems to have escaped, so return to the caravan. That's basically it for this little fight. Your troops to, um, you return to the caravan while some of your troops stay behind and search the bodies of the shack. Eventually, they rejoin you, carrying a few valuable trinkets and some, some equipment from Espen's men that is still useful. One of them hands you free bags full of caltrops. You may find no use for them later. So basically, caltrops are the type of traps that you never really got to see, but perhaps you'll see in the future. So that's basically it for this engagement. We got a nice little bit of experience from all that, at least. Um, Castellas, I think I'll take the equipment from you because you have more or less serve your purpose for now. Same with you, uh, Teresa. We'll put that equipment, we'll leave that equipment on Gabriel here. Um, we'll take it off of uh, Adriana here. Uh, maybe I'll use Mercedes again in the future just to, to try and show her off a little bit more. Put more equipment on you. Arenas will take the equipment off you and we'll put it on uh, Martinez, Padella, and we'll put on uh, Burial here too. So you're equipped, you're equipped, you're equipped. That's three. Four, five, six, seven, apparently. Oh, there's just really no more um, reason to equip more than um, six people, but whatever. We'll see what, what I'll do later on. Now, I think for the remainder of this episode, I'm going to try and make my way back over to like the coast over here. So that we can basically start uh, trying to find a chart to coast uh, waypoint that I basically missed. And I sort of want to go in that direction, I guess, so... Let's go in that direction. Alright, let's see here. Um, I do have some herbs to do, but we won't really worry about it. 
And this will be like the first time you're ever going to see this, but because Mercedes is now, you know, a veteran and she's got tent tinkering, we're going to actually have her do the uh, invention for the cart, so we'll get that out of the way. Rations, we'll alloc allocate our meat. Um, basically, this fleet are one, ration, one ration for now. Actually, I've got over 100 rations. This is actually a good time to maybe start giving everyone double rations, so we'll do that instead. So I'll allocate the meat and... And there, that'll work. Or no, it won't. All right, whatever. Let's just do two rations. Give everyone two rations, and then uh, you can have two meat. You can have. Uh... Well, I guess I got an extra meat. Um... Well, why not? Let's just go give uh, Danielle here only one meat. Saves on the rations. So we'll use up a bunch of rations here and start giving these guys a big morale boost. But whatever. Um, I want to basically get my, you know, my rations down at least below 100 for now because I got way too many. And if I get, if they get stolen, I'll lose a lot. That's the main thing is why I'm trying to get rid of them down a little bit. All right, so your patrol is uh, found half, half of the ruined Spanish cart of oil. That's nice. Make your way over here. up the stuff over here. Basically we'll explore the mountain over here a little bit while we make our way toward the coast. We'll hug the, you know, the edge of the map, so to speak, is what I'm going to do here. Alright, an enemy divided. Basically when this, when this happens, you're going to have to fight some rebels. So, the sounds of battle attract your attention and investigate. You bring a handful of troops and move towards the sound of combat, reaching an outcrop overlooking a ravine. You see two groups of rebels locked from battle below. Espen's troops appear to be fighting Landers people. The group is um, already strewn with bodies, but a dozen troops are still alive on each side. So, if you want to, you can join the battle and kill everyone, but it's actually probably better to let, you know, let them finish and see who wins. The battle is so brutal and so bitter as only a civil war can be, as both sides are fighting with tooth and nail. It seems to have already been going, going, for, um, going for a while, however, and in a quarter of an hour, it's over, and Landers' surviving troops are retreat back into the dense jungle. Eight of Espen's people remain. So, you have the option of telling to, like, surrender. Or you can withdraw and let the rebels go. You can also order your troops to take positions behind cover, or your troops to sneak closer and fire from cover, or you can just attack the rebels. Um, I think for this one, let's try and be nice to them. Diplomacy. They're almost momentary panic as they spot you on the ridge above, but the highest ranking soldier among them um, as is called in the order. As command, they raise their archivists and fire a volley towards your outcome where you're saying the initial fight hits nothing, but the message is clear they will not surrender. So let's attack. We were nice, we let them try to surrender it in, so they're gonna die. I'll bring Mercedes to this battle, I think. Let's bring Reina too. I'll bring Reina, Rosella, and Gabriel. And we'll bring the Dr. Teresa, I guess. And we'll just take the stuff off of uh, Bureau for now, I guess. So they're more or less equipped. Um, let's give Sanchez her rifle, I guess, this time. Let's take that off the damn dagger, because I don't really want you doing that anyways. And you can get boosted up here, and you can get boosted up there. And I guess we'll give you this free here. So you do have the option to uh, sneak up on them, but whatever, I decided to, you know, ignore that and just let them, let them basically uh, shoot me first.